Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the CX Green Room. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Claire Beattie, Senior Director for Thought Leadership at Genesis. The CX Green Room is where we get the inside track on the big trends shaping customer experience today. On the show, we have my co-host, Ginger Conlon, Director for Thought Leadership at Genesis, and Richard Tucker, Head of Software Engineering at Ovo Energy. And we are so excited for this conversation today. We are going to talk about how software engineers are helping to lead the CX evolution. The thing is, you know, when you talk about employee engagement in the contact center, so often the conversation is around the frontline agents, but they are not the only ones making it happen for the customer. There's another really important group, and that is the software engineers and the technicians behind the scenes, making it possible for those frontline agents to do their excellent work. So that's what we're gonna talk about with Richard today. But first, of course, it is the CX Green Room. So we have to talk about, you know, Richard's CX Green Room item. So he requested cheesecake. So we, we all have cheesecake for today, New York style cheesecake. We are all anxiously waiting to take our first bite. And um, so let's just let's just pause for a moment and share with all of you how delicious this cheesecake probably is. And I also want to hear from Richard, why New York cheesecake? And also what was the item that we couldn't get for you today? Uh, <laughs> uh, I can't remember exactly what I said, but I think it was something like, um, I like New York cheesecake because it's really sort of simple. Um, no fuss you know it's really classic classic simple stylish and delicious well, like me that's <laughs> so, what i remember <laughs> uh, and my my first choice was uh like a, a local beer that i like around here um which is called shangri-la uh by arba but uh, i thought i you know i'm supposed to be speaking and perhaps drinking beer wouldn't those two things wouldn't mix too much <laughs> <laughs> with the cheesecake instead. <laughs> well, mine's delicious. How's yours, Richard? We sent yeah. it to you from the uh, the English Cheesecake Company. Mm. Absolutely brilliant, delicious. I, I have to confess as well that wasn't my first bite. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, hard to sit with cheesecake right next to you. You know, I have to say. If you see me sort of looking down like this all the time, you, you'll know what it is. <laughs> all right. Well, people aren't joining us to, to watch us eat cheesecake. They're probably getting quite jealous. So let's get down to uh, the conversation that we're planning to have today, which is to talk about software engineering in the customer experience. And Richard, you head up software engineering um, in CX at Ovo Energy. We'd love to hear a bit about your department. Um, how many of there are you and mm -hmm. what kind of projects do you work on? Sure, yeah. So on the engineering side of things, which is what I look after, um, we look after uh, customer care operations and also the, the part of the company that deals with fulfillment, sort of field force and smart, uh, installing smart meters, that kind of thing. So across all of those domains, we have probably something like 60, 65 software engineers. Um, and then that's kind of the engineering uh, contingent. But then we have also, you know, product managers, UX designers, experienced designers, user researchers. And so then you put all of that together and you end up with uh, multidisciplinary teams that are in domains. Uh, so customer care being one of those domains. And then within customer care, we have um, a team that we call multi-channel and integration uh, team. <clears throat> they look after the Genesis product primarily. We'll probably talk more about that later, I guess, but they do things like routing, um, the intelligent part of the routing, getting the customer through to the right person, but also things like chatbots, stuff like that. Um, uh, and yeah, so we the idea is within the team, you have everything you need. You have UX people, engineers, product people, uh, business analysts, that kind of thing. And what are some of the projects that you're working on? Yep. So we went live with Genesis Cloud 
nearly a year. In fact, it's a year tomorrow uh, that we went live with um, with Genesis Cloud. Um, and so really what we've been focusing on is using the uh, the technology that we have with Genesis Cloud to improve um, the customer satisfaction, but also lowering the costs of uh, cost to serve. So doing things like uh, I mentioned earlier, intelligent routing when customer contact is coming in. What can we know about that customer? What can we predict? How can we try to deflect or or enable a customer to self serve? Maybe they don't need to, you know, go in a queue to get an answer. Perhaps we can do something with them with the chat bot or web chat. So. Um, and obviously, with what's going on in the energy industry at the moment, we're trying to prepare for the winter to make sure that when um, when customers need to start using their energy more, that we can support them uh, with you know with what's going on in the industry with price rises, inflation, cost of living crisis. We want to make sure we can give our customers the support they need over the period. So, you. Know you mentioned a lot of the technologies that are um, on the back end helping you, you know, chatbots and things like that. So, you know, over the past five years, if you think about it, there's been really a huge technology shift in the platforms in the contact center. And so how has the shift from on-premise to cloud, which you mentioned, impacted the roles of IT and your software engineering team? Yes, so um, I suppose the biggest difference is when you look at Genesis Cloud, it uh, you have open APIs uh, using standards that um, engineers will know about. So the, why that's important is if you contrast that to what we had previously, um, which was an on-prem um, product that was kind of, no one really knew how it worked and you had to work with specialist partners who had engineers who were certified in in that and that was really the only way to do it you couldn't really do much in-house um, and that's kind of like the norm for most of my career was things that are very specialist like t telephony um you would you'd work with a partner i think now with genesis cloud and and the like the developer resource center for an example the documentation that you have that engineers can just go and read that's changed that paradigm substantially and actually almost completely i would say so i mentioned earlier we have a team of um uh, about six engineers who uh focus just on the genesis product and um you know we can rapidly iterate close to our our customers um instead of the old and um, we can do a b testing we can try things out in a much safer way if you contrast that to how it used to be you used to have to kind of well, we can be agile now. In the old days, you used to have to get all your requirements up front, go to the vendor, do a statement of work, go through it. And by the time you got to the end, it was usually not quite right. You'd missed something. Um, but meanwhile, you've just spent a lot of money on professional services. So now it's it's kind of like enables us to try things, fail quickly if we need to, um, and I guess uh, limit the risk there, which leads to more innovation because you can have a much higher risk appetite when you know you're not likely to waste as many resources trying something out that you're not sure is going to work. And in a company like Ovo, that's been a disruptive, uh, you know, has been a disruptive challenger brand, and, and we still think of ourselves like that in the energy industry, we need to be able to iterate quickly and try things out and fail quickly if we, if we need to. We had a question come in uh, from Brent Leary. Hi, Brent. Thank you for the question. How do you and your team stay connected to the frontline agents and what will help them improve the experiences they're delivering? That has been interesting, uh, as I'm sure you can imagine, over the last couple of years with, uh, with the pandemic. The, the old answer to that, the pre-pandemic answer to that question was, We'd use the um, I think I think I think the agile term is called Gemba, which basically just means go to where the work is happening. So what we would do is go and stand next to the agent and watch them and see what's going on. And now we have to think of ways of doing that remotely. I mentioned earlier we have uh, we have designers, UX people, as well as engineers and product managers. So we will shadow. Uh, we'll set up sessions with uh, frontline agents where we just say show us how you work, show us a, a, an average day. 
Um, we'll ask for pain points. Um, we obviously have feedback loops in there. Um, but also, OVO is just launching something internally um, that we all bring in back, actually, something we used to do, which is that any employee in the business can book a session to go and shadow an agent or to go and take a, a trip in one of our uh, field services engineers vans and really live a day almost or half a day or something like that in the life of that person. So you can take back to your department what what it is like, what your customers experience is like and, and your users as well. And I bet they really enjoy doing that, going out in the van for the day and seeing how it works on the ground. Yeah, uh, it, it is. A, it's a, certainly it breaks up your week. It's a different day, but it is very interesting. I don't personally don't think you can beat first hand experience of, of watching something happen uh, live. Yeah. Uh, another question, when we often uh, you know, speak to business leaders, CX leaders, the metrics that they talk to us about are CSAT, customer satisfaction, or reducing cost to serve. Like what metrics do you focus on? And like, what are you excited about in terms of like your impact on the business? Yeah, so we, uh, customer satisfaction obviously is a, is a really important uh, metric. So we send surveys off of the back of various interactions. Um, which is like an NPS type thing, you know, how would you rate this? Um, we have NPS as well, like, you know, would you recommend us to a friend or family? So that's kind of on the quality side of things and, and we measure that. Um, but the other side, of course, is the cost to serve, like how efficient can we make our business? And I think the thing that excites me about and why I like working in, in CX is that it's often one of the only parts of the business that can directly impact both sides of that equation you usually have to uh, trade off between quality and cost and so if, if you want like really really high rich customer experiences then it's going to cost you more and the challenge i set to our teams is well what about if we could try and do both if we can either keep the costs level but you know increase the quality or even better reduce cost while in increasing quality and I think, like I mentioned earlier, having the power to do that in-house, you have a much better chance of doing that than necessarily, you know, the old fashioned sort of waterfall way of working. Uh, does that answer the question? Yeah, sorry, I was slightly distracted by some uh, some interlopers behind me. Who let them into the green room? <laughs> well, you know, I think this is actually the place for another question that came in from Jason Alley at Genesis, who actually introduced us to Richard. So thanks for that, Jason. So he's at, he says, hey, Richard, can you share some of the steps you take to continue to motivate your team to make CX coding cool and rewarding? Yeah, so I think there are a number of things that motivate people in life and engineers are no different. Um, so obviously money is one thing that motivates some people. But when you speak to a lot of engineers, they're very passionate about it. This is a craft that we're talking about. This isn't just like, I'm not going to offend any other parts of the business, but you know, this is a real, this is creative. It's, it's engineering. And for them, what they get a lot out of is the impact of their work and what impact it has. And so when I talk about feedback loops and the metrics, the things that we were just talking about before, um, you you can an engineer can ha can see quite quickly the impact of their work particularly if it's solving a problem so there's obviously enhancements that we do and efficiencies that we do but sometimes we'll get you know um it could be an incident you know something broken or it could just be we've realized that uh, we've got this problem that we didn't know before and if we can define it well and get a good problem statement and understand what good looks like how are we going to know when this is improved and you know what are the metrics to, to measure that then an engineer when they set about doing it and then it gets released they get that feedback and i think because a lot of what we're doing is internally facing and customer facing so you know our consumers are, are interacting with our technology but so are our customer service agents and, and our internal users you get to see the impact in different contexts as well which is quite uh, quite interesting and I suppose the other thing is just to talk about the, you know, the 
what we're talking about here about the technology in Genesis, it's motivating that, um, or it's, I should say, it's not demotivating at the very least, that engineers can use industry standard practices. They can use things like Terraform and um, uh, version control, source control, <coughs> excuse me, GitHub, things like the st standard kind of um, tooling uh, in the contact center context, which is quite novel for us. So all of our IVRs and um, uh, how we manage customer contact is expressed in code and it's in GitHub and it's in source control. And that's, it means that engineers don't have to work in some very weird esoteric way that's special to that vendor. They can just use their standard software development lifecycle practices uh, in, in a CX context. And so I have a, a question that's actually kind of related, um, which is, so there, you know, there are many people listening to this uh, show who are technologists in customer experience, or maybe they're thinking about it. What would you say are some of the most interesting or exciting projects um, that software engineers get to work on in the space? And you talked about it a little bit, but if you could, you know, maybe just give a couple examples. Yeah, I think um, probably the advancements we're seeing in natural language processing, chatbots, things like that. Um, and it's quite easy to just be cynical about those and think of them as just cost cutting activities. And, ex and, and they do remove cost out of the business because you know, you're know you using a, a computer instead of a, a human. But the way I like to think about that is that we can use technology like that for more transactional um, interactions. So you know, an example in an energy company might be somebody wanting to give a meter reading what if you could just take a photo of it on whatsapp and send that in and you're done rather than make a phone call and you know come through to an agent and read numbers out and that's not so great experience for anybody so what if we could free up more of our agents time to have the more emotional conversations with people um it could be about a complaint or it could be you know a bereavement probate you know these kinds of things where you want to have more you, you really want a person dealing with that. You wouldn't want a, a robot dealing with, you know, a death in a family kind of thing. So, um, and I think that's really, it's quite cutting edge. And what's good about OVO is that we have a level of autonomy in our teams to try out new technology and cutting edge stuff. So we, we get on the Genesis beaters for things. We get on all kinds of different things. And I think that also, to go back to the last question about motivation, getting to use the latest technology in the latest use cases. Um, that's what engineers really want to do because then they're they're at the forefront, they're at the bleeding edge, and most engineers I know um, enjoy being there. Uh, we have a great question come in. Uh, thank you, Ibrahim I'm a Fadi, and I hope I pronounced your name right. Um, can technology detect customer satisfaction through voice analysis? And I know that you know one of the innovations is sentiment analysis using that over voice. Is that something that you have tried, whether in beta or, or whether you've rolled it out? It is. And I have to check myself, actually, that I don't give away too many of our secrets of like what we're trying to do with the technology. You know, we want to talk about how good it is, but without giving our competitors too many ideas. So we do. So there is built in capability in Genesis to do sentiment analysis. Um, one of the things I'd like to, to do with it is at the moment how we look at what a call was about and how happy the customer was. We have ways of doing that but it's based on the surveys I mentioned earlier, and it's based on um, rap codes. So like how, how an agent at the end of a, a call or a web chat, how they effectively mark that uh, or categorize that interaction. So an example might be, you know, direct debit could be one of those codes, but that's not really granular enough. Um, also, you end up with lots of them and it, it, it doesn't really give you a, a great insight. So what we'd like to do is combine usage data from the tools that we use, that our agents are using, what's been clicked on, what activities have happened, and the speech and text analytics from Genesis. When you bring those two things together, um, I think you can get a much clearer, more granular understanding of what 
is going on in the contact center. So what conversations are our agents and customers having? How effective are they? You can get training insights from there. You can get satisfaction insights uh, as the question says. And I think that's another thing we didn't touched on yet is you, there's a lot of data in Genesis in the platform. You can just go into the user interface. You can go and look at it. It's close to real time. It's really, really quite you know, you'd normally have to wait overnight for these kinds of things. And now you can see them very quickly after the call concludes. But we can also take it all out of there as well. So we can extract all the data out of Genesis and we can put it in another platform and mix, you know, join it with other data. And that's where you start getting your real insights when you bring data from different facets of your business together and and, and look at it in the whole. And one of the um, and thank you, thank you for, for for the answer on that one. I think you know, as you mentioned earlier, we are sort of you know, st particularly in the UK, and I'm not sure what's happening in the US, but really staring down the barrel of you know, uh, quite you know, fast rising, um, you know, energy prices, and a lot of households are going to be affected by those rises, you know, in, in October and then again in January. Um, Potentially, that's a lot of more challenging calls coming into the contact center. Like, how are you thinking about that from a CX perspective? So I think um, uh, a couple of things I guess I mentioned earlier about um, one of the things we could try to do is not make it worse. So not, um, you know, exacerbate people's frustrations by making them wait in queues all day long and then and then they get through to somebody after waiting in the queue and it's not someone that can help them they have to be transferred and you know they sound like small things but if you're already sort of worried about something in your life and and or your, your family's finances or something the best thing that we could do is get you through to somebody who can help you quickly um so a one-stop shop you don't get passed around um you don't have to wait for a very long time and so, um, like I mentioned earlier, I think what we try to do is say, there are a bunch of things people talk to us about that are really transactional and that we should be able to offer a self-service channel for them. It's always gonna be optional. If you really need to speak to somebody, you, you'll be able to. Um, but speaking for myself, actually, as a just about as a millennial, I would rather deal on WhatsApp. I would rather not speak to somebody on the phone. Um, and so if we can give, um, you know, if we can give more options for people to self-serve, it frees up more capacity uh, for us to talk to people who really need our help and advice. Um, so that's kind of the, the gist of it. And obviously there's a lot more detail in there. Um, yeah, th thanks for that. And thanks Sergio Coretti for the question. We just have a couple more minutes left. Ginger, one more question. Yeah, sorry, it's coming off mute there. So um, you you mentioned earlier, Richard, um, that you know, that working in a remote environment has challenges in terms of interacting with agents and being in the room with them. So what are some of the things that you and your team are doing to kind of get closer across the, the miles, so to speak? Yeah, so I mentioned earlier about sort of doing shadowing sessions and having workshops where we will um, uh, literally just observe an agent and we're doing this on video conferencing, basically. Um, and we've actually set up a uh, something using Genesis and a few of our other technologies so that I mentioned earlier about people can book to spend a, a day in the life of, a, of an advisor, for example. Um, and so what we wanted to do there is be able to observe, but make sure that the people doing the observing could not be heard on the call. Um, we obviously need to keep our customers phone calls private as well. So we need to make sure that we're complying with all, all the rules there. But we've basically come up with a way where we can um, improve the, 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 the quality and then the agent experience by having these sessions where we, um, we just ask them what do you like about your the, your job and the technology you use? What don't you like? We do the same with managers and senior leaders. And then that gives you a, because uh, actually that's another thing to say. If you just focus on what the chief uh, customer officer wants, for example, which we do need to, 
you might miss some of the nuance that you get at the at the agent level. So I find, think it's important to ask all users and consumers of the system what they need, not just the agents and the customers. Absolutely. Um, there was one more question that came in. I didn't see this earlier. Um, question asked by Vikas Shriwas. Um, Hi, Richard. What's your fallback plan? Presumably talking about cloud uh, in case there's downtime from the cloud side. Like, what's your what's plan B? <laughs> That's a good question. So we have. Um... We have a, a, a reliability team in OVO, and we have a business continuity planning manager. Um, and we have, uh, I forget the name of it now, but I think there is a feature um, in Genesis where we can, uh, help me out, I've forgotten the detail. I have this in a plan. We have a BCP plan. Um, and I think there is a, um, we have the ability to move to another instance quite quickly, I think. It's a the reason why it's a really good question is that I guess one of the reasons one of the things we think about when we use cloud providers is that there is an inherent business continuity um, or disaster recovery aspect to cloud versus running your own on-prem. So we don't I don't think we're as susceptible to a power cut in Bristol as we used to be, for example. Um, so I guess the answer is that if you if you if you want to catch up with me, I can give you the details when we go through our uh, go through the plan. Um, but actually, one of the things is you know cloud gives you more reliability, and we just don't expect it to go down. And if it does, we have uh, backups from uh, Genesis that we can switch to. We also uh, have the routing of our numbers is outside of Genesis. We don't uh, connect directly in. So we have a fallback uh, IVR essentially uh, in another cloud provider where if Genesis becomes unavailable, which it hasn't and probably won't, then we can still do some basic uh, servicing of customers in there, but it, it wouldn't be something you'd wanna run for a long time. Yeah, makes sense. Well, so Richard, this has been amazing talking about um, you know, the ways to motivate your, your engineers and how important they are to the uh, customer experience and the employee experience and how they're, you, you have your folks kind of working so closely together uh, throughout the chain. We have a couple of other questions that came in. Unfortunately, we are out of time, but um, hopefully we'll all see you again next time. And thanks for joining the CX Green Room today. We'll drop a couple of related assets in the chat afterwards. We've got a couple of great studies like values and agent performance and beyond MPS uh, that will provide some like related information, some data and some trends that are related to this that hopefully you'll, you can uh, get some, something out of as well. So thanks again, everyone, and see you next time at the CX Green Room. Thank you very much. And thank you, Richard. Cheers. Bye-bye.